Welcome to St. Mark United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Bob Marks, and I greet those of you who are here in the sanctuary, as well as those of you who join us online. Just a couple of announcements. Child resistance package testing, which is a youth fundraiser, will go on on October the 15th from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. We need volunteers from the age of 50 to 70. Contact Judy Goldstein for more information. Bible study, God Never Gives Up On You, starts on Monday, October 16th at 7 p.m. in person, and on Thursday, October 19th at 10 a.m. via Zoom. For more information on the Bible study, please reach out to Bill Wiesak. Trunk or Treat is October the 29th. Put it on your calendar from 3 to 5 p.m. Registration is uh, being required. Um, it's October the 20th. Contributions of uh, candy as well as those willing to decorate their trunks are being solicited. Uh, please see Becky Petreka for more information. Having made these announcements, we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We invite you to join in our call to worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. The Lord hears the cries of the people. Give thanks to the Lord. The works of the Lord are great. Remember what God has done. Give thanks, give thanks to, the to the Lord. God has done miracles, and the Lord always remembers God's covenant. Give, give thanks, thanks to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Glory and praise.
join together in a time of prayer, beginning with the unison prayer on the screen. O oh God, who knows our every need before we can even ask, you provide all our needs and some of our wants. You bless us all. Make us truly thankful and empower us to bless others from the gifts you have given us. For the glory of your name. Now we enter moments of silence together. And now we join our voices in that prayer which Jesus taught disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory
of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people will go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron and all the Israelites, in the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, Then the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him. What are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard your complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came down and covered the camp. And in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of the dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as that on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Our Gospel lesson this day comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, the 20th chapter. I'll be reading verses 1 through, I'm sorry, yeah, 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go out into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. 
So they went. When he went out about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. He said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. And he said to them, you go out into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last, then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us. You have borne the, we have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to the last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Are you envious because I am generous? So the last shall be first, and the first will be last. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Honestly, how many of you are tired of hearing others or listening to yourself? complain. Now I'm not talking about the person who from time to time complains about the weather or life or things at work. But for every person who from time to time raises a complaint, there are persons who complain about anything and everything. You get to the point you hardly listen to their complaints anymore because you know that there is nothing in the world that you can do that's going to satisfy them. The story is told of Carol who decided she would do something nice for her next door neighbor, Mrs. Smith. She baked a pie and took it to Mrs. Smith who was surprised when she opened the door. For me, she asked, oh, thank you. You don't know how much I appreciate this. Since she liked the pie so much, the next week Carol took another pie to her. Mrs. Smith took the pie and said, thank you, you are very kind. The next week Carol took a pie and Mrs. Smith receiving it saying thanks. The next week, Carol took over a pie, and Mrs. Smith informed her that she was a day late in delivering the pie. The following week, Carol took the pie, and Mrs. Smith suggested that she use less sugar and not bake it quite as long. Next time, she said she'd prefer apple filling rather than cherry. The next week, Carol was so busy, she did not get to bake pies. One day, while lit, passing by her house, Mrs. Smith yelled at the front door, Hey, where's my pie? Some folks just can't, you can't satisfy them. There's never enough. Those some folks are us folks. No matter what we have, we have reason for complaining. So I invite you today, turn to your neighbor, tell them your name, and ask, where's my pie? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Now next Sunday, we're gonna have a whole group of people showing up with pies at church. <laughs> 
Mark Twain wrote, don't complain and talk about your problems. 80% of the people don't care, and the other 20% believe that you deserve them. <laughs> According to the authors of the book Significa, the world's champion complainer was Ralph Charell. It is reported that Charell earned over $100,000 as a result of his systematic complaining. His smallest refund was $6.45, his largest over $25,000. Charel spent time each day making phone calls and writing letters of complaint. He wrote a book entitled How I Turned Ordinary Complaints into Thousands of Dollars. All of us have the right to stand up for ourselves, but how would you like to be known as the world's champion complainer? Wine, wine, wine. Complain, complain, complain. It seems to be all that the Israelites knew how to do. Seven times in these 14 verses, someone is said to complain. It, it had to be exasperating for Moses. This wasn't his idea. He did not volunteer to be the chief of the complaint department. Yet, the gripe leaders go into action. We're hungry, Moses. It's past dinner time, Moses. There's nothing in the refrigerator, Moses. Jacob ate all the pineapple, Moses. You need to go to the grocery store, Moses. Quickly, complaints turn into accusations. Did you and Aaron bring us out here to die? Why didn't you leave us in Egypt, the good old days when there was plenty of food to eat? Are you trying to kill us, Moses? Is it like those snicker commercials of months ago? We are not ourselves when we are hungry. The grumbling of the Israelites and our grumbling is a product of our forgetfulness. Suddenly they're forgetting how bad it was to be a slave in Egypt. They forgot how shortly ago God was passing them through the Passover, when God was bringing them through the sea, when God was rescuing them from the Egyptian army. The grumbling here is selective forgetfulness, remembering the past as good old days, forgetting conveniently its problems and trauma. They forget how God has provided for them so far in the wilderness. But the emphasis of the story here is not the people's grumbling, but God's patience and faithfulness in hearing their cries. Instead of lashing out against the people's whining, God speaks through Moses that he has heard their cries. He understands their need. He knows that they must have sustenance. In the evening they will have meat, and in the day they will have bread. God hears our cries, our complaints, our grumbling and groaning and moaning and whining, even when everyone else is tired of listening to it. God promises to rain down bread from heaven each morning, but tests the obedience of the people. They're to take enough for one day, except on the sixth day when they would take enough for the sixth and the Sabbath. If they took more than what they needed each day, it would develop into worms and go bad, unfit for human consumption, like four-day-old leftover French fries. There was plenty of manna, but not too much to hoard not too much to waste. 
human nature being what it is. It doesn't surprise us that later in the story, there are those who seek to grab as much as they can, rather than taking what they needed and leaving enough for others' needs. How much food do you throw away because it has gone bad in the refrigerator? We are the generation that invented storage units. And yet we pray, give us this day our daily bread. For 40 years, God provide, provided this manna. Literally, what is it? Maybe it was like in Forrest Gump when Bubba spent two days reciting the ways you can cook or eat shrimp. The Israelites had raw manna, baked manna, manna biscuits, boiled manna, and manna dumplings. But God heard their cries and provided for the people for 40 years. Each morning they were reminded that they were on God's journey. And God had the power to provide food even in the wilderness. One author writes to us as the discipline of dailiness. It's like going to the shop right every day for 40 years. God help us. <laughs> God's economy here is that everyone has plenty, but no one has too much. There's enough bread for leaders and servants. There's enough for those working all day and those with little to do. There, there's enough for the able and the disabled or differently abled. To all, manna is a gift. Old Testament theologians argue that this manna comes from the tamarisk bush. There are small insects that suck the sap from the tamarisk bush and concrete or excrete the excess sap as a small white flake, rich in carbohydrates and sugar. These flakes quickly dry in the desert heat, so only a daily provision can be gathered. Bedouins today still collect the flakes and make manna bread. Whether it is through this natural process or a miracle, the people in the wilderness knew that God heard their complaints and responded to their cries. Nothing luxurious, nothing that would be found in Chef Ramsay's kitchen, nothing served on Top Chef, not challenging Bobby Flay, just sustenance. Plenty for everyone but not too much for anyone. In our gospel lesson, we encounter a parable that struck us by its unfairness, and we encounter God's system of fairness and justice. Those working all day receive the same way as those who worked one hour. Call the union rep. Is this in our contract? The owner of the vineyard points out to those who have worked all day, did I not pay you the daily wage I promised? Well, yes, but that was before we knew you were going to pay others who worked less the same amount. Can the owner of the vineyard not be generous to those who had less opportunity to work? Are they charging him with making sure everyone has enough to survive on and no one more than their share? The truth is, we think we deserve more than our neighbor. And we should have more than the person who doesn't have a college degree. And if we work hard, God owes us. Like daily bread, all that we have is a gift of God's generosity. God is not required to invite us to labor in the vineyard. And if God gives us what God promises, who are we to criticize that God offers grace 
to others. So our complaining continues. We cry out we don't have enough money, enough time, enough toys, enough pies. The whole time forgetting that we are among the world's people most blessed. It's not fair, Lord, that others should have as much, if not more, than we have, we think. God hears our groaning and blesses us despite it. God challenges us with a vision where grumbling is lost in gratitude. Let us pray. Most gracious and glorious God, forgive us. Forgive us, most gracious God, when we are so busy complaining about what we don't have or what others have that we want, that we fail to see all of your gifts poured out into our lives. Most gracious God, you have a different view of fairness than we do. But Lord, this day we can't sit here and say that you haven't given that which we need. We ask, most gracious God, that you might open our ears, our eyes, our hearts, that we might think about those who don't have enough rather than all the things that we want more of. Dear God, we come unto you this day and we pray for those who are in need, those who are hurting, those who don't have enough of this day's sustenance, who no longer have daily bread. Lord Jesus, we offer ourselves to you this day. And Lord, we'll seek harder to not be constant complainers. But instead, to learn the grace of gratitude. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray.
and grateful thanksgiving for all that you've given unto us. Most gracious God, we not only receive these gifts, we commit ourselves to share these gifts. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. 